Our last speaker for this session is going to be talking on big data analysis and insights in the online gem and jewelry trade. Uh, please help me in welcoming the CEO and founder of Gemmy Wizard, Menachem Severdish. Thank you. My name is Menachem Severdish. Today we are going to explore together big data analysis and insight into the online gems and jewelry trade. This was developed by the Gemini Wizard Company. Let's start by what is in fact big data? Big data is collecting, organizing, and analyzing large data to reveal hidden patterns and extract useful, sometimes very useful, information. What are the challenges in our world? The German jewelry world lack common language. There is no one language to describe color and also other attributes of the stone. And there is an online pool what you see is what you get experience, which causes improper disclosure, misrepresentation, etc. This harms consumer trust, causes disputes, and there can be legal actions, etc. What is the concept of Jamie Wizard? The system was created at first as an academic tool for establishing standard methods for communicating color between remote traders or people to complement the existing non-digital methods made of paper, of plastics, and the GIA gem set. After years of research and development, we have come up with a patented system by which we take an image. This image is turned into 3D image, an image that we collected. We had half a million of them. And each one of these round images is turned into uh, 2D uh, images of all the most common shapes. We place those rulers of colors, half a million rulers, around the spectrum and measured each one of them to fit a certain place. Together with the GIA team in 2004, took us more than a year, we fine-tuned the system to be as close as possible to what the GIA perception was of their uh, color space. Very quickly, we realized that in order to be viable for the future, because things change very quickly, we must record each and every color and just record it by image. It's not good enough. So we created what we call the sampler. The sampler takes the image of Jamie Wizard, analyzes its color in 2,000 to 10,000 points, and create what we call DNA. This DNA is what you see in front of you here, represents what is this image made of. Very quickly we found that we can take this system to analyze images and take images that are not part of Jamie Wizard, but analyze them and find the closest color within Jamie Wizard to match this color. We find that we can do it on a vast scale when we go into websites, we take the images, scan them, find the closest color, 
and also manage to collect using our color and contextual analysis capabilities, manage to collect other information that is around this image. For example, this is a five carat, ruby, Burma, such and such, heated, whatever. The system knows to absorb this very important uh, information. And we realize that we are gathering vast amount of information that we can create from it a price list or a pricing system. That means we found that for this color, for that weight, in this clarity, the average uh, price is $1,000. Now, how we create it? It's not so simple because it depends who's reporting. If a Fifth Avenue uh, store has a certain stone for $1,500 per carat for a certain quality, a small shop in a small town can sell the same stone for 1200 And in Thailand, the same stone is $800. So this is what we call the zero point. It always matters who is reporting. And our uh, analysis gathers this information and creates a certain price which represents this phenomenon of different prices for exactly the same stone. We call what we have now big gem data analysis. And it provides the capability to organize information and get data from it. First thing that we do is standardization. You must compare apple to apple. This is a big thing. We classify each gem and use unified taxonomy in six languages today to organize the information that we are collecting. The other thing is to find from that information we collected color and contextual analysis of the information and find what we call peculiarities. That means if you say such a thing about an emerald, that that's, sounds logical. If you say something else, you call it suddenly flux natural emerald, something is wrong there. So it's, our system knows to locate these peculiarities, like price peculiarities too. What the system algorithm does, it scrolls the HTML of each gem that we meet, and we extract the relevant information, and we add this relevant information to the big data for further analysis. Now, you must understand, every information that we extract is immediately compared to all the millions of stones we had seen before. Let me give you an example of what we actually do. Contextual and color analysis. That means we not only analyze the color of the image, we also analyze what is written around it. Look at this big gem data, huge pile of information. Our system, first of all, arranges it and pick up the information on one stone with all the attributes of that particular stone. And then we take that and turn it to important information about the color and by comparing it to all the rest of the information that we have on the data, huge data that we have, we create a price. Once we create the price, we get some insights. No, this is not logical. How can it be a 10 carat sapphire from Burma for $150 a carat? This should be $50,000 a carat. Something is wrong. So this is done completely automatically by the system. Well, just to give you an example about the speed, we did a project, half a million items. 
it would have taken for a gemologist at least two minutes to look at a stone and say, well, this is logical. Well, this is not logical. Two minutes each, 900,000 minutes, that is five years' work. Our system does it within four hours. And this is with 10 servers, and now we are having 20 servers. So today, it will take two hours to do half a million uh, uh, analysis of the images and all the rest of the information. In the last two years, we were lucky enough to be asked by a major leading retail marketplace. We gathered the huge data of 20 million items of value of about 16 billion dollar value. First thing that we do, automatically of course, is create unified taxonomy and terminology in all the languages. Secondly, we identify the okay items and the suspected activities and listings, and then we retrieve insights and identify opportunities within the information. What is an oddity? An oddity is an information to the, that will sound and look to a person who is an expert very odd, wrong, misleading, or unlikely to exist. Let me give you examples. Ruby and Zoizite together, although they are two different stones, they're okay. Longido rubies have Zoizite around them. So this combination, if we meet it by scanning the information, is okay. Yellow ruby, if we find, is something is wrong. Enhancing, they write in the information, oh, it's only heated, and then we find within the HTML, LGF. LGF is lead glass field, which is not just heating. It's a dramatically different process. Price oddity, as I told you. A 10 carat fine quality sapphire for 99 cents per carat. Something is very wrong. And another very important thing that we do is machine learning. That means our automatic system retrieves the information and suddenly finds an odd word, etc., etc. This word is moved into our gemological team of gemologists and we check what, where can we use this thing and what does it mean. For example, they were writing natural chatum emerald, not chatam, chatum, okay. And we realize this is some fraudulent way of describing a synthetic emerald as a natural one. Let me give you some examples. These beautiful lab-created diamonds that we are talking so much today, one carat, $400, mm, lab-created. Jamie Wizard System automatically identifies oddity. One carat, $400, this should be couple of thousand dollars, okay. It's lab created moissanite. Not only that, it's saying that it's synthetic diamond moissanite. Nice, okay. A combination that immediately jumps to our system and say, this is a way to fraud. And the FBI was involved, by the way, in this particular stone, nothing to do with us, uh, about the fraudulent activity of that two stones. Another very interesting uh, item that we found was this emerald, which was proclaimed to be completely natural emerald, green, etc. Our system automatically found that it is Flax Colombian emerald, very interesting. Flax. They are uh, probably producing it in the mines. Flax. <laughs> and another very nice thing, it is only uh, treated. How? Heat and pressure. Wow. If we would have done heat and pressure, we would have ended up 
with powdered emerald, maybe natural, but still powdered. Heat and pressure emerald, okay. We are talking a lot about heat and pressure for diamonds, so that's it. Let's forgive him. Clear intention to uh, mislead. And this is all automatically caught by our system. And the nicest of them all, one carat, fancy vivid blue diamond. Wow, for a thousand dollar a carat. No mention of synthetic. So the system didn't find anything synthetic. And the seller commits that everything that he says is a accurate information. There is only one problem. He's asking a thousand dollar, and that thing is worth at least $180,000. Something is very wrong. Highly suspicious as undisclosed item. So you see, the system knows to compare. Well, we know that the system, yeah, that a fancy, vivid diamond should be such and such. How can it be? And that immediately pops up as an oddity. We can get from the information a lot of unprecedented uh, data and uh, insights that really uh, can help. Uh, for example, you know that in April, such and such colors were selling better than those other colors. Geographical location of certain colors sell better in other places than in China, for example. For example, trade insights. We always thought that the bluer the Tanzanite, the better it sells. While we analyzed millions of uh, items, we realized that the hottest selling item in Tanzanite is in fact bluish violet and not violetish blue. Why? People in their perception have that Tanzanite is violet, uh, bluish violet. Another thing is that when we analyze the whole uh, data of that huge marketplace, we found that in fact uh, the biggest volume, about a third, was green, emerald, and other things. But when we compared it to the actual sales, we found that on sale-wise, it was only about 15%. And in fact, in sales, Blue were doing much better, although their position within the um, inventory was a lot smaller. So this is a very important insight. Maybe you are buying too much greens and selling a lot of blues. So it's an important insight. Another thing is pigeon blood. Now, we didn't go to Europe and to the Far East and slaughtered pigeons to see the color. No, we didn't. What we did is we checked the perception of the dealers. What do you mean by saying pigeon blood? We found that in the Far East, these Jamie Wizard colors that you see in front of you are considered pigeon blood. And to our amazement, in Europe, we found that the Europeans accept also an additional two lighter colors as pigeon blood, while in the Far East it's not accepted. Do not go and slaughter pigeons in Europe and compare them to pigeons in China. Yes, this is not the intention of what I'm saying now. And then geographical trends. We found, first of all, globally, that there is some kind of acceptance now of Pastelish colors that were practically not accepted 10 years ago. Somehow, there is an acceptance to pastel colors also within designs and within jewelry. That was a global thing that we found. We checked the state's high demand for special colors and special gems. We checked China, a lot of demand for unheated stones and their prices that were, let's say, be, 10 years ago, we were only about 50% more 
expensive than the heated stone, today they are three times more expensive. That means a five carat ruby that was, let's say, $20,000 uh, unheated and 30,000, uh, sorry, 20,000 heated and 30,000 unheated, today it's 20,000 heated and 60,000 unheated. Very great important. And we see also different demand for different colors. Same thing in Europe, demand for sapphire, rubies, a lot of spinels of special colors, and again here, pastel colors. And trade insights. You remember this lovely lady? She's still around. She got a beautiful sapphire ring from Williams that belonged to his mother, Diana. And we analyzed, using the Jamie Wizard system, the color of this stone. Can you believe that we have found that in the month and couple of years after, there was a surge in demand for that particular color, and we saw it in the sales of the marketplace. So a thing like that can cause uh, um, increase in demand, and this is very, very important insight. Another thing that we found, which quite surprised us, is that millennials seem to prefer slightly lighter color stone. We, we know the age because we were reported by our, the trading platform about the age and the gender. And when we started asking around why, we found that for the millennials, Two saturated gems look unreal, and they prefer a touch lighter. Yeah. Well, and last but not least, Jamie Wizard is partnering with Everledger, which is the next generation blockchain technology, to bring the following benefits to our trade. Safety, security, and scalability. Why do you ask do we need blockchain in this, in Jamie Wizard? Well, if in 20 years from now, somebody will come and say, how did you, in two, October 2018, decide that this two carat ruby is $1,800 a carat? We will have the information ready for you where we got it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Menachem, and thanks for all that information. This has been a very nice session, and we hope you will...